Welcome to the Windows channel and this is the weekend edition. This is bulletin number two. I uh, will uh, decided to uh, basically number them. So uh, we'll see how many weekend editions as time goes on. I think it's going to be cool. So this is the weekend edition of the Tech News for the weekend of December 10th and 11th, 2016. And um, of course, this is a bulletin where we take a look at some of the news of the week and come back in a little more detail on them. The first one is um, the visa thing. You know, visa, uh, I talked on Monday about the visa cards not being secure. I talked about it again, I believe, yesterday, Friday. Um, you know, it's interesting because um, uh, I learned a little more about this from uh, Steve Steve Gibson, which um, that that's a guy that you know is, is very active in the security field, and was talking about why the Visa cards are at risk. So basically, what's happening is that um, by going to websites and trying out possible guessing possible card numbers. So, so how do you guess that? Well, basically, there are certain numbers of the, on the cards that you can already guess from, for example what institution you're with. Uh, if you notice, you know, each bank has the first four numbers and then often does the, the other four numbers that follow also have uh, a specific uh, item that has to do with basically uh, your your bank and the transfers and the stuff and then you got the rest of the number and you know that IDs that card and that it's your card and all of that. So basically you can guess up to a certain point some numbers you can guess easily, uh, you know, the dates with the uh, uh, the expiry date. That's kind of an easy one to guess. And uh, of course, um, by using all the guessing that you can do on a website, and uh, you know, even the uh, security number in the back, which is basically just a three number. You know, it's just easy. If you try one thousand times, you'll actually find that you know, the three numbers you get there. So, you know, all of that, It's it seems, you know, far off because you start th thinking about, you know, how complex this could be as an operation. But it isn't. It's not that far off because if you just build an algorithm that, you know, creates all of these uh, in a very rapid succession and always tries them in different websites, um, the fact that the Visa cards don't have a limit on the error and the trials that they get means that you can just go on and try each card as many times as you like. And with a computer that tries this really fast, I mean, you will find out Visa card numbers that are active, that work, that you can do stuff with. And, um, you know, what Steve Gibson says that the reason why MasterCard is not affected is very, very simple. The system the back-end system works the same as Visa, except it has one one difference. And that's the major difference that makes it secure compared to Visa. After 10 tries, the card is blocked. So that means that after 10 tries, you just can't do anything with the card anymore because it's blocked and it needs to be um, you know, either reactivated or, you know, the, the bank will probably contact you telling you that your card has been blocked. And it's uh, very, very interesting. And Visa itself, I don't know who's running the security there, but um, I don't know. It's like they have their head in the sand and they're refusing to say that it's a problem. And they did issue a statement saying, well, that's a non-issue. It's not a security problem. At the same time they were issuing this, there is a gang of security researchers that said, well, okay, if that is uh, such a remote, you know, not a security problem, let's try it out. And they, they worked. It worked. They were able to actually uh, get, you know, money and transactions done by finding out numbers. And so, uh, you know, they did it with cards that they already knew part of the numbering and uh, you know that means for example uh, your visa card uh, somebody could at the counter um, you know see your visa visa card and uh, 
you know, register the numbers on your card. They already know, uh, you know, the number of the card. They already know, um, you know, the expiry expiration date. And uh, all they have to do is guess the CVC, the, the numbers on the back. But, you know, that's just a thousand tries before they uh, will find which one it is. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're the unlucky one that has, I don't know, 044. Four. Well, after only 45 tries, uh, you're already going to have... Uh, a uh, you know a transaction that's that can be possible crazy and it's it's incredible that you know visa doesn't actually uh, do anything and think of how important this could be so I'm telling you if you got a visa card be careful be very careful because it is at risk uh, even though the risk is yes remote you need to have your card in a uh, place in a moment and use it in a place in a moment where somebody will want to do this but now that you know it's out in the world that it's easy to do this I can bet you there are dozens and hundreds of you know and if not thousands of bad guys that suddenly are like oh cool we're well, gonna try that out now um, I hope Visa changes its mind on this Amazon Go that famous store that Amazon opened in uh, Seattle, Washington, where uh, you just go in. Basically, the way it works, okay, is before you get into the store, you log in to your uh, Amazon app, and the Amazon app uh, actually logs into the fact that okay, you're logged into the store. It's okay. You're getting into a um, you know self distribution store, basically self serving. And you go in the store and you pick up the items and there's a cool video that goes with it where uh, you can see, um, you know, the person isn't sure. She takes, picks up the item. You can see the background, the computer saying, oh, okay, uh, one of, uh, you know, uh, soap. And uh, then she changes her mind, puts it back on the shelf, and then you see, oh, one soap disappears from the list of things that she's picked up. And then while she's going and shopping, she says, oh, I, I want to have the soap. So she comes back and picks it up. And here it is. You know, it's all all checked out by all sorts of little details. There's uh, cameras. But there's also something with uh, NFC in here. Um, the way that it knows a lot of what you're doing is that the uh, NFC, the products have some kind, apparently, of NFC chip on it. That means your phone with its NS NFC chip uh, probably also can match and see what um, you know you are picking up and what you have next to you. Uh, also, so uh, you know it's kind of interesting, and uh, you know you don't have to pick up your phone or anything. You just pick up the item, and that's it. It knows the store knows, but it brings you know another dimension to technology here. We're talking. A lot in the past year or two how self-driving cars and artificial intelligence will take away some jobs and one of the things that you look here you know I, I I would be the first one to want to go to a store that you can just go in and pick up stuff and get out and it's automatically charged I mean I I don't know about you but <clears throat> my greatest problem in a store is having to wait to pass the cashier Especially when there's a lot of people and you got to wait like, you know, 20 minutes before you just go and pay your items. That is probably one of the worst nightmares for me in a store. I'm, you know, I'm a guy, so I'm not, a, I'm not much of a shopper. And basically, that is a great idea. If the same store would offer what I want and I just go in and go out, no waiting, nothing. I can bet you I'd love that. But it takes away cashier jobs. Suddenly, you don't need any cashiers anymore. And you know what? That's the danger of the future. The future is where the jobs don't require that many skills and are, are easy to eliminate. That's where it is a problem. That's where we see that in the future, where we're going to have a big change is education is going to be even more important. People that know nothing will be the ones that are going to be, you know, uh, out of the, out of a job basically, because a lot of these people will be doing jobs that machines can do. 
computers can do. And, uh, you know, of course, that, that store needs employees that do other things. So there need, there's need for employees that will, you know, fill up the stock. But even that, I don't know, I could see a, an automated store. I could see a store that, you know, fills its shelves with drones or anything. I don't know. Uh, little machines, little robots will ju just go up and, uh, you know, fill up what's missing and no need for anybody nowhere and uh, kind of interesting now on the security side I don't know how you know can people walk in and just steal stuff that's another story and we're not we don't have information on that but you know that's the start I'm sure Amazon would love to have stores that have no cashiers anymore and almost nobody working in them uh, why because it will also make these stores very cheap suddenly, so it means that the items that we buy will even be at lower price, at the cost of job loss, though. So, uh, you know, interesting. Um, I'd be interested in trying out and using a store like that, yet it, it's a start of the implications of uh, jobs for the future. Apart from that, we also talked about this week of PlayStation 4, 50 million units, 10 million in the six last six months. Uh, Xbox One, estimation, because we don't have numbers, of 25 million, maybe, so half of what PS4. Now, this draws a lot of passion. I've got so many comments, both on the, the news item and also on the um, in private. Many people saying the PS4 numbers, the PlayStation 4 numbers are, are bloated, they're way too high. I don't see, it's not true, uh, Sony is actually, uh, you know, um, giving false numbers and stuff like that, and it, you see it draws a lot of passion, you know, and, and PlayStation and Xbox is a little bit like uh, Windows and Mac. Um, yes, some people have both consoles, but I can bet you that you're either a PlayStation or a Xbox guy. Uh, it It's something that is very, very distinct and if you talk more about PlayStation it hurts the Xbox guys and if you talk about you know Xbox too much it hurts the PlayStation players uh, it's, it's it's very interesting and uh, I don't know you know a lot of people say hey no these numbers are false uh, of course they're released by Sony so uh, Sony can say the hell what they want uh, you know they could have said 75 million and I don't know nobody would have said nothing about it um, the lack, one thing is for sure, the lack of release of numbers by Microsoft kind of hints that Microsoft knows it doesn't sell as many Xbox as PS4s. Now another thing that we have to be careful because a lot of the comments I got were from US residents and I gotta say one thing, it is proven that the Xbox One sells more in the US than the PlayStation 4. But remember, like phones, um, it's very different what's happening in the US or in North America from the rest of the world. We're kind of in a very different market here. It's like smartphones, you know, iPhones have a much higher, uh, you know, installed base in the US than in the rest of the world. You know, 40% in the US versus 14% around the world. A big difference so I, I think it depends where you are and you know one thing also you got to know is that in Japan the Xbox one ain't selling really much in Japan Japanese are buying PlayStation consoles not Xbox consoles and that's always been the case that's a big market so very interesting you know this these numbers could be could be you know I, I don't think PlayStation or Sony is necessarily lying on the numbers um, where it's surprising is the 10 million in the past six months. Um, and I think it's easy to see that around the world, yes, probably PlayStation sells more. But if you're in a specific market, you know, like the United States, uh, of course you see more Xbox around you because it sells more than the PlayStation. So uh, really, you know, passionate, and I'm sure I'm going to have more comments on this uh in the description and everything um, I don't know I don't know what to say more about this
win heck this week. Very interesting, uh, you know, win heck um, conference in uh, Xinjiang, um, China, where uh, Windows, where Microsoft, you know, showed a lot of things. And this is a conference for mostly for hardware. And uh, lots of amazing things came out of there. Um, the uh, teaming up of Qualcomm and Windows team to have Windows 10 working on ARM uh, tablets and phones. That's kind of interesting. If you think about it, it opens up totally a new world for Microsoft. Having phones running Windows suddenly. Uh, this is something, and not just that, it's, you know, x86 apps running. That means you could install your favorite app, your favorite software, and a phone and a tablet that's not even an Intel. It's an emulation inside an ARM phone and device. And of course they're saying, well, you know, we're, we're going to start with very recent devices, but uh, they've opened the door to maybe uh, some older devices that's, that have, you know, um, powerful enough ARM processors already that could also have this running, you know? Nothing says that in a year or two I might have Windows 10 in my Galaxy S7 phone. Who knows? Uh, but that's not where we are yet. But wow, that is kind of an interesting future here. Uh, and um, it renders obsolete the fact that you need to do Windows phones suddenly. Is that where Microsoft is going into the Windows stuff and the phones and the market of the phones? Hey, if we can't make Windows phones that sell, why not emulate Windows 10 and all the phones that exist with ARM processors and have Windows on these machines and it's like a Windows phone suddenly, somehow. But something else that uh, is intriguing in here, because there's a lot of particip participation of different players in the WinHack conference, including Intel. You know, Intel should be scared of this deal, of having Windows 10 on harm. That means the reliance of having an Intel chip in our devices is suddenly not as important. I could even see a, um, a laptop maker saying, hey, Let's pull. Let's put a uh, ARM processor in our laptop. Cost less than an Intel, and run Windows 10 in the emulation side of it, and have other possibilities at the same time. Um, Intel should be scared, I think. And uh, another very interesting news, because of course we are talking about the Home Hub, which is a more of a turning your PC into some kind of device than a device itself. But one thing that catch my attention a lot is that at one of the keynotes in this conference, um, Microsoft did say there will be a lot of devices available by Christmas 2017. What does that mean? Devices that will run with those 10 in emulation or devices that you're not talking about that will exist and will be there by Christmas next year, including some kind of Amazon Echo, um, you know, with Cortana? I don't know. It's, it's very complicated to, uh, to say what Microsoft is trying to say sometimes on some of these things, but uh, kind of cool. Kind of cool and kind of really, really interesting in seeing how Microsoft is moving ahead here. Um, really, really nice. I think Microsoft is, you know, once again, leading innovation while Apple is pretty much stalled. And um, I think it's showing just that Microsoft doesn't want to take the future for granted. They want to be part of the future. And that's interesting. And finally, a lot, lot, last bit of news. The uh, ongoing saga of Samsung going crazy at all the Note 7s that are not coming back. And Samsung's trying to do things, and um, some people are 
not don't want to. And to give you uh, an idea here is that uh, Samsung announced that the phone will not be able to charge in the United States starting December 19th. But there's a problem here. First, Verizon that says, oh, we're not going to pass that update. If people want to keep their Note 7 and use it, we're not going to let that update go through so that you can't charge your phone. And they don't want to block the phone from the carrier. That's why in the US, there's nothing much happening. Carriers say, no, if people want to keep it and it's working, uh, we don't want to interfere with that. Samsung knows it's dangerous and wants it back. And so, you know what? It's opening kind of a war where, okay, we're going to have Note 7s all around the United States and all around the world with the potential of exploding or something. And uh, because some people don't want to bring it back. Some people, I think a lot of people are thinking, well, if I have one that doesn't explode or it hasn't exploded yet, it will not. And the problem here is that it's not at all the case. Samsung has said the battery swells when it's charging and every device is dangerous. So I don't know. This is going to be something. And, you know, I've uh, seen a few people that uh, actually were mentioning how they, uh, their parents or the people they know had a Note 7 and they don't want to depart with it because they just love it too much. And they don't understand how dangerous the device could be. Of course, some of the Note 7s out there will not explode ever and will, you know, probably still work in five years. But why take the chance? It's a very dangerous thing. It can, you know, I don't know. It is a complex issue to get back everything when you've sold. You know, they sold millions of those. How many exactly? Uh, you know, I'd like to see numbers. How many are there that are not going back right now? You know, and that's not counting. I was thinking about, what about those that bought it on the black market or something that, well, you can't really turn it in. It's probably an unlocked phone that is maybe illegal. <laughs> There's no turning in. That's for sure. So, uh, anyways, we'll see what happens and uh, if Samsung can eventually get them back, all of them. So this was the weekend edition of the Tech News for December 10th and 11th. And I'm sure some of you have your own comments and observations on some of the news that we've talked about this weekend. And uh, this is there for that. Why not share your own impressions and your own uh, observations of one or multiple uh, news items here. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. And of course, we'll be back on Monday with regular tech news on the channel. Thank you for watching.